Now, today I said we talk about techniques of arms control. Techniques of arms control. Now, in last class, remember, we talked about disarmament and the different definition of disarmament and that of arms control. Now, what is the way, what exactly is that way to ensure that arms are manageable and they are controlled? Uh, the, logic is, the logic is if you give everybody access to guns now, what tends to occur? And there will be no control. And of course, what can actually be destroyed. Now, if we now want to control, not stop people from killing themselves, they say there are some mechanisms you actually have to introduce. And that is what we are now trying to look at briefly. There are basically five techniques to arms control. There are basically five techniques to arms control. The first one is the numerical technique. Numerical techniques. That's from number. Second is categorical technique. Third is geographical technique. Third, I mean, fourth is the deployment, deployment and technique, uh, the, the, the testing technique, deployment and the testing and development technique. Finally, you have a transfer technique, or you can change all those techniques to these restrictions, numerical restrictions, transfer restrictions, categorical uh, restriction, geographical restriction, then I said uh, development, testing, restriction and that so you have categorical restriction numerical restriction transfer restriction geographical uh, restriction then finally you have a uh, the deployment development and testing restriction now those are the five techniques those are the five techniques to arms control basically those are the five techniques to arms control remember i emphasize that unlike disarmament Arms control is not interested in the destruction of that weapon that you already have. What arms control is interested in is trying to create what you call equality. I have what you have. You have what I have. Now, that way the world is made a safer, better place. I'll repeat it again. I said, unlike arms I mean, disarmament, remember, arms, uh, disarmament talks about destruction of that weapon. That's all the things you have. You bring them over in public, then you destroy them or you shutter them. But uh, arms control is the opposite of that, which is why that thing has been a bit successful compared to disarmament. It will not tell everybody to destroy what they have. It will only try to make them equal. If I have one gun, then let's restrict ourselves to just one gun. If I have four guns and you have five guns, okay, let's agree to make the world a safer, better place. Let, let's make it four, four guns. Now, those are all the techniques involved or restrictions involved in arms control. So let's start with geographical restriction. Geographical restriction simply means that the signatory, those countries that signed that thing, have agreed among themselves not to declare, not to drop bombs. They've agreed among themselves not to put bombs in certain regions in the world. They've agreed among themselves not to deploy weapons, not to de deploy nuclear weapons in certain regions within the world. Does that region, that area is restricted, is a no-go area, for the deployment of weapon so geographical simply means that a specific area specific region that countries have agreed among themselves that weapons will not be deployed in such area for example that is the restriction that explains why there is no nuclear weapon in the whole of latin america till today they've agreed among the geography that that region is nuclear weapon free that's why in latin america is the head of any country with a nuclear weapon argentina brazil all of them, none but we recall none in that region of that world as a nuclear. The, the, the same thing also applies to space. Countries in the world have agreed not to militarize space. So that is why there are no nuclear weapons in space. They've also agreed that there should be de 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 no deployment of nuclear weapons in the seabed. So that is why till today there is none. In the, geographical means areas are off limit to deployment of nuclear armament. Please, can I continue? Can I continue? Numerical restriction simply states that uh, countries agree within themselves to limit the production of no weapons to certain number. Now, I said numerical restriction simply means that countries have agreed among themselves to limit the numbers of nuclear weapons that they can have, that each can have, each can prove. The countries have agreed among themselves to limit the number. That's why they said numerical number. If I can only produce two bullets, then you agree to produce two bullets. If you can only have four tanks, then you agree to have only four tanks. This is based on number, not geography. So again, they are not trying to talk about it, equality. So if we have the same kind of I mean, number of weapon, we won't, I won't be tempted to attack you, and you won't be tempted to attack me. Uh, because, you know, I can kill you the same numbers of ways that you can actually kill me. So that way, the world is made a safer, better place. Please, can I continue? After numerical restriction, then you have transfer restriction. You have transfer restriction. Transfer restriction simply states that countries with the knowledge of nuclear armament agree among themselves not to transfer that knowledge to countries that did not actually have nuclear weapons. So countries with the knowledge of nuclear technology agree, all those ones that signed that thing, agree among themselves 
not to transfer the knowledge of nuclear weapon, nuclear technology, to countries that did not have that knowledge. And that way they are trying to make the world a safer, better place. That you have the knowledge already, you agree among themselves, they agree among themselves, not to transfer, how to build the weapon to countries that did not actually have that thing. To a large extent, I think that is why the numbers of those with nuclear weapons in the world is actually restricted. As of now to today, there are about nine. Out of a pop world population, there are countries of 220, 30 something. So to, as of now, out of the whole of humanity, the analogy, that idea to countries that they don't actually have. And I said that stuff has actually largely been successful. Out of about 220 countries, only nine countries in the world, or eight if you remove Israel, have nuclear weapons. I'm sure they had actually not placed that thing. The, the agreement for that thing was signed in 1963, if I remember. They call it a nuclear non-proliferation treaty. And of course, now Nigeria also signed by 69. We agree, even that if we are, if we are offered that thing, we, we are not interested. Interestingly, during the Obama just administration, the North Korean ambassador to Nigeria offered Nigeria nuclear technology. But Obama rejected it, being a good Christian, because heaven is his goal. <laughs> we rejected that thing based on that thing called the transfer restriction. You know, that stuff is more problem. It creates more problem that actually gives you solution. So it explains why most countries are not actually, I mean, apart from the fact that it's expensive, the expense, the expense is not even the reason. Okay, so you have, I said you have testing, testing, deployment, and development restriction. That is, don't even do, don't even know it. Don't do it at all. It's not a matter of, let me cheat if they will catch me or they won't. Don't even go there at all. I said, testing, deployment, development. Don't allow it to gestate. So that's the only way to restrict that thing. Is that the, 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 point is, the point is that don't, don't even do it. Don't develop it. Don't test it. Is it not when you develop it that you're not be thinking of testing it? So there's a restriction on even developing and testing. And they do. So don't build the weapon at all to make the world a safer, better place. When you don't build the weapon, I mean, logically, then the world will be better. Imagine. So it's the same with weapons development. Now, weapons you don't have, you don't test. So weapons you don't have, you, don't, you are not even tempted to use it. Before America dropped that bomb over Hiroshima and Nagasaki, they've already te tested it in Acapulco, in New Mexico, in America. They've tested it. They saw what the thing could do. They now said, yes, let us now practice it on humans. So what they are saying about that restriction is, look, don't develop, don't test, even if you've developed, don't test. Then if you've tested again, then don't deploy. Let it just die where it is. And that way, of course, now, the world will be safer and better. Even if you've developed this, since you've not tested, you won't know what that thing can do. Exactly. Then you won't be interested in looking for people to kill or to test that something on. You know, when you go to Babalawa and they've done uh, this thing for you, Ayeta, uh, that thing that says bullet cannot enter into your body now. You know, once you've done that, it's better not to do it. Once you've done it, and you'll be looking for somebody to shoot you. <laughs> you, have to, you. You have to confirm the efficacy of that thing that they've done for you. It's the same with nuclear weapon. They say that, that thing is like a spirit. When you have it, you know, at a point, that, uh, that guy in North Korea and Trump, they were doing Kalu Kalu with world's destiny. When we were saying, I have a bigger bomb, the other one said he has a bigger bomb. Then the other one said his nuclear button is bigger. The other one also said his own nuclear button is bigger. <laughs> you know, they were playing with human, human life. And the other one said his own can get there 20 minutes faster. The other one said his own can destroy 10 minutes faster. And the other one said his own can destroy two states. The other, the other one can destroy 15 states together. And because they have it. If they didn't have it, then the world would be safer and better. Then the other one said, even if you have it, if you have it, don't test. That is what, then two, don't deploy. So it's a restriction that has been kept keeping the world, making the world a safer categorical restriction. That is, when states agree among themselves not to develop certain kind of weapon, not to develop certain kind of so as a restrict you to specific kind of weapon. We are only allowed to produce guns, not missiles. So we are only allowed to produce a issue of arms control. control. The first recorded instance of arms control in modern history was in 1899 and 1907 was in 1899 then 1907 then 1925 the first recorded instance of arms control was in 1899 1907 then and then 1925 that of 1925 was known as the geneva protocol geneva 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 of geneva geneva switzerland protocol the protocol was signed against the use of gases in warfare gases and bacterial in warfare I said the first recorded history of arms control in modern times was between 1899, 1907, and 1925. Remember, I did not use the word nuclear. I said where they started. 
You know, in warfare, they discovered, during the First World War, that they were using gases, gas, gas, gas. Gas are like insecticide that you use to kill mosquitoes. So they are, not using, they are now using that thing on humans. And they now said, no, that's too deadly. That's too wicked. That is too extreme. So they now signed an agreement that in their warfare, you can now see now, categorical restriction, nobody is allowed to use gas to kill themselves. That was the situation until 1945, when America dropped the nuclear bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So when America dropped that bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and they knew, others knew that <laughs> other countries might be interested in getting that weapon, by 1946, they established a regulatory agency to manage nuclear technology. By 1946, they established a nuclear agency to regulate nuclear technology. And they called that thing IAEA, International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA. So gradually, they've now started that arms control. Uh, the one we are actually interested in. So they established the IAEA. But in 1963, in 1963, America and Russia signed the uh, nuclear uh, anti-ballistic missile treaty. In 1963, America and Russia signed the anti-ballistic missile treaty. Now, that anti-ballistic missile treaty is a categorical restriction. As they came up with the anti-ballistic missile treaty, in 1973, the world now came up with the MPT. MPT is the preeminent treaty that they are still using till today to stop countries from having nuclear technology. They call it the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. The Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. By 1969, everybody in the world had actually signed that thing. By 1960, 1969, everybody in the world had already signed the, that MP, including Nigeria. Which explains, ladies and gentlemen, why Nigeria is not a nuclear power. So by, by 1969, everybody in the world had actually signed the, that the treaty. Exactly. Uh, that one is, is not only geographical, it's numerical, it's category, it's transfer, test, everything. Don't even have it at all. All countries, like I said, to show the importance, including Nigeria, signed that agreement. By 1972, by 1972, America and Russia signed the SALT 1 and SALT 2 agreement. Strategic Arms Limitation Talk. By 1972, first one, SALT 1, 1979, SALT 2, America and Russia signed the Strategic Arms Limitation, Arms Limitation Talk, numerical restriction again. Uh, that is, they agree among themselves that, look, if we have 50, we'll stop on 50. We are not going to increase that thing to any other number. To make the world a safer, better place, if you have 10, then I will only have 10. And we won't develop more. So, like I said now, you have deployment testing restriction, then you have a numerical uh, restriction. Between 1991 and 1993, America and Russia also signed what they call START 1 and START 2. START 1 and START 2. Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty. Strategic Arms uh, Restruction, uh, um, Reduction uh, Treaty. All these things I'm saying, they are in that technique. That technique I mentioned at the beginning. Techniques of arms control. All those SALT 1, SALT 2, SALT 1, so all of them, they are in the reduction uh, treaty. Remember, not all these topics, all these uh, the arms agreement I've been mentioning, none of them mentions destruction of that weapon. That is disarmament. They, they are not even interested in that thing. All they are interested in is just control the one they have or reduce it or make it manageable. Again, I'll repeat, I said, none of these mentions destroy the weapons you have at your disposal. All the thing is talking about is to control the one they have, to manage it, that's to put a moratorium, stop it at where you have it, manage it, or make it equal. And that way now, you know, the world will be safer and better. If I have 10 and you have 10, logically, you don't have the advantage. I don't have the advantage. So the two of us will be interested in peace. Compared to if I have 10 and you have 12, that means when I've exhausted my 10, you have two more. Exactly. That is the logic that they've been using to keep the world there. Ask yourself, why have they not exploded their nuclear weapons until today? Exactly, because they are not even sure. You can, we'll get to that problem later. You can lie that you only have 10, whereas you have 20. And the other one too that is swearing by God that he only has 15, probably also has 30. And so the, you are not sure. It is that fear that you always have something somewhere that is keeping them from attacking or destroying the world. America would have destroyed North Korea a long, a long time ago. You know what, what their fear is? They said... <laughs> There's that possibility that if they level Korea, one of the bombs can still survive. And if one survives now, the damage will be incalculable. A nuclear weapon is not something you shoot and you fall down. It takes all, it takes all the whole of Lagos. If there is a nuclear exchange between America and North Korea, who do you think will suffer more? America. Why America? America. Huh? Why America? No, we have something. Not that, not... Eh? No, no. 
Okay, if there were to be a nuclear war between Nigeria and Benin Republic, which will lose? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have to go now. See, you answer the question this way. You are in your new Lamborghini, 2026, and you are driving your Kodokwe. Uh, listen, no, you are in your new car, state of the art, and every retrofitted, <laughs> 2026, not even 24, and you are driving your baby Volkswagen B2, and it's a narrow road. And you are coming this way and it's coming that way. And the two of you agree that no, I'm not shifting for that poor person. And it's not shifting for that rich person. If there's a collision, who will lose more? Yeah, uh, that's the answer to who will lose if there's a nuclear exchange between America and North Korea. Think of the development now. Think of the skyscrapers in America. Think of how many you have in North Korea. Think of industries you have in America. Think of how many there. Think of the population you have in Korea. Then think of the 